So you have your labia minora and your labia majora, okay, which is basically what everybody says your labia is like your lip, okay, just like you have your lips on your face. So looking at that, highlight the list at the first paragraph. Your labia majora, labia minora, your clitoris, and your bortholin glands. But all together, our external structures, we call it the vulva. Okay? So, one thing you're going to see, unfortunately, I hope you don't, but it's called the vulvectomy. Okay? And that means we have to actually remove um, external female areas plus internal if they have really bad cancer. Okay? And we've done it before, and it gets kind of gross, and it's very sad. But um, these women are having, like, their inner thigh being removed, lymph nodes, some of their, like, bladder is gone, their vagina, all their internal organs are gone. Like, and then we just sew them up. And they don't, they can't pee or poo out down there anymore, and they just have a bag, you know. And it's just that they choose to go this route, maybe to live a little longer, you know, I've only seen one in my life, and it was a lady who was in her 30s. And she had a baby, and she ended up having a severe form of cancer. And she decided to get herself cleaned out just to try to live longer. You know, and y'all, I cried because I was like, oh, my God. Like, she just gutted her down there. And just, they had to take a oh, kind of areas. Like, even... Urinary had to go in there, general surgery for the intestinal and the rectum all had to go in there. GYN was in there to do female stuff. Plastics were in there trying to skin graft and put stuff back together. Like it was a big old thing, like for hours. So we usually talk about it in GYN, I have some pictures. But um, so that's why it's called the vulva, but you will hear vulvectomy, but that's like everything all together, okay, is it termed vulva. So the first thing they go over is going to be the labia majora. Um, that's your outer, larger area, okay? Um, they have labium major, it's all weird English Greek names on this PowerPoint right here. But that's going to be the outer part, okay? It says that's your adipose tissue. It's mostly smooth muscle, covered by hair. It has your sweat glands and sebaceous glands, okay? So that's the... Uh, easiest part to identify basically okay um it says the inner side is going to be smooth and hairless the anterior ends of the labia majora come together to form what's called the mons pubis which is this top part that basically sits on top like your pubic bone okay and that's why it's called mons pubis so it's right there on your pubic bone um, the posterior ends will taper and merge together just to form the perineal area so that's why in med terms, we have to separate the words peritoneum and perineum. Okay, there's a difference. So your mons pubis, you have your labia majora here. At the top, it forms the mons pubis. But when you follow it all the way down, it tapers down to this point to where it's called perineum. Okay, that's why it's called a perineal prep. So we're prepping right there, the vagina and the anus area. Okay. Um, so make sure you understand that mons pubis is like your labia majora. It goes to the mons pubis and it goes down to the perineum, okay? The labia minora are situated just inside the labia majora. It says it's small longitudinal fold. They are composed of connective tissue, highly vascular, and they actually sit there and form where your clitoris is or clitoris, whatever you want to call it. So when you're looking at the hairless ones on the inside right here that's your labia minora and then you have your clitoris right here which is basically equivalent to like the penis in a male okay goes on to talk about your clitoris a little more small region of highly sensitive tissue because it has all your nerve fibers right there same thing as like a penis situated at the anterior end of the vulva um, at the ends of your labia minora Plain and simple, that's it. Um, they have a paragraph about a ritual mutilation on here. Oh, God, y'all Google that. We did one year. Y'all, always sad. Like, I had to go whenever I first hit, I'm like, oh, I've got to go, like, Google this. And it's just a control 
like it's a control thing. They want to control these women, like the men want control, and like they will cut that clitoris out, you know. Or some people go and sew up the vaginas of women and like only open them up when it, they want to impregnate them, because it's like their woman. Like it, y'all. They have some rough rituals out there. Um, all right, so we're not doing the nerve supply. We go straight to Bartholin glands on page 392. Okay. No, I tried it. Don't let me. I'm looking at what they got to record it. The other kind of room, I could, but not this one. Um, Bartholin glands. Those are going to be, if you see in your bottom right photo, these little gray things, they're going to be underneath. Of course, you're not going to see them, okay, when you're just looking at somebody's area. They're going to be hidden. But they're called, they're in a, what's called a vestibule area, okay? So in this little whole area where you see it's in between your urethra and your vaginal opening, they call it a vestibule, okay? Um, it's just like an, a holding area. Remember when we did ENT, we did the ear, you had your, um, your little vestibule with your cochlea and all. It's just like a little middle area. That's what your vestibule is. That's where your borthalin glands are going to sit in, okay? Um, you do have ducts because it's a gland, just like your parotid gland, your salivary gland. The glands open into the vestibule, okay? That's why you do. You have secretions. Okay, your body is cleaning itself. We always used to say like, oh, your vagina area is like a self-cleaning oven. You're supposed to have secretions like that. Okay, it's normal. Um, that's why some doctors will tell you they are anti like douching. They don't want you going and douching all the time because you're cleaning out. You're getting rid of things that your body is using to protect you. Okay, so I remember they used to always tell, you know, at uh, in surgery, we used to talk about it. I'm like, so I said, oh man, it makes me want to go home and douche. And Dr. Neo used to be like, I'm telling you, if you're going to do that, do it like once every so many months. He's like, don't douche. You said, I have a lot of patients that come in and just douche, but they get more infections because they're not clean. Like they're killing everything that's in there. So, right. So you want to keep the good bacteria. And that's why he, he's going to say, he's like, it's a self cleaning oven, let it do its job, <laughs> you know? Um, so the Bartholin glands, they can get blocked, okay? So what they, what happens is you get a Bartholin stiff, and it's called the recipitalization of a Bartholin stiff. Um, different types of reasons are going to have this stiff form, whether it's a blockage in the duct, um, you know, overproduction or something like that, or injury, okay? How many of us, when we were little, would ride our bikes and we'd jump down and hit the bar and we'd get between our legs and we'd cry and burn and, you know, sometimes that's what causes it. We had little kids come in before because they have a bartholin gland that's just blocked and we have to go in and open it up and drain it, okay, until it heals. Um, so the the treatment of the bartholin gland is called morcipulization, okay, and it talks about... Um, they're making a closed cavity into an open cavity. So basically, we're going to cut where that gland is, and we're going to open up the gland and fill the outer edges for the skin and just kind of let it heal from the inside out. Okay, so that way we don't want to close it up. And they keep all the bad infection in. So they just kind of split it open, pack it, let it heal, go back, and then they can release it. And then we'll sew it up once the infection's gone and everything's clean. Okay. Yeah, it'll go back. It'll go back. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. The pus will build up in there. It gets nasty, nasty infections. So if you ever think you have something going on down there, like, go get it checked out. Some women say, like, I feel like I have, like, a rock or I'm sitting on a golf ball or, like, they just eat it and they go to the doctor and you put them up and then they might have a big old bulge. Yeah, and it's like then you just know it, get your suction tip ready, get some laps ready or something, because the minute you incise it, it's going to float. So you want to keep it open to have that intentional heal healing from the inside out. Okay, you don't want to trap it all back in. You want to flush it out real good and make sure it's clean, okay? So that's the purpose of your porcelain gland. 
Okay, but yeah, we're supposed to have them. We're supposed to have secretions, all of that stuff. But they show you how it has the opening, the duct going into the vestibule area. Okay, and you have a left and a right, so you have one on each side. As far as your female hormones go, we're not doing the healing of the genital tract. Okay, we go straight to the female hormones. Um, we learned about your pituitary gland. Okay, and neuro, the little white thing one that came. All right, so the anterior portion of that is what's kind of basically responsible for us relieving our female, releasing our female hormones. Okay, so it says the anterior pituitary gland, your hypothalamus, and your ovaries all secrete female hormones that are responsible for the development and the maintenance of your female reproductive cycle, your eggs, your sex, secondary sex characteristics. Okay. The female sex hormones that are secreted by the placenta during pregnancy as well, okay, they come from your ovaries and your adrenal gland. Courses are called estrogen and progesterone, which I'm sure you've heard, 